The Shack is back. Greetings, Kooplings. My name is Donnie Reese, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Nintendo Shack. Nintendo Shack 70, Pokemon Day 2019. Now, as we mentioned last week, Miss Caroline is off this week. My Nintensis is moving into her new bungalow. Uh, she's moving. Hopefully, it's better than a shack. That's what we're hoping. But uh, have no fear, because I've brought friends with me. All the way over from, Ninten- from Nintendo Nostalgia is Ryan, the Metroid Hunter. How you doing, man? Hey, I'm great, man. It is good to be on the show again. I love the shack. Uh, it's nice and cozy in here, so... All right. <laughs> Thanks nice. for inviting me over. You you came at a... Uh, uh, you mean, we, we've had this in the works for a few weeks now. And uh, I got to tell you, of all the people that selected dates, you picked a really good one. <laughs> at the time when I <laughs> yeah. DM'd you, I had no idea that today was Pokemon Day. Did you? Uh, No, no. I, I started seeing posts later in the day about Pokemon Day. I didn't know that was coinciding with, with the big you know direct and everything. I was just... Yeah. I was like, oh, cool, they're going to announce something on a direct. I had no idea it was something special Pokemon, so yeah, I, I, I should have known. But. Yeah, it's like, I know Pokemon Day is every year, like, I get it, but, like, you know, it's not on my calendar or anything. It's, you know, typically Nintendo Twitter lets me know, you know, three, four days. I think maybe this year, like, maybe a week, because we had the direct last week, there was a lot of people like, and next week's Pokemon Day, I bet they'll have something to say there. So, uh, yeah, man, well, welcome. Thanks for coming back to the Shack. We appreciate it. I know Caroline appreciates you. And uh, we've got a lot to break down, as you already alluded to. We did direct today, about six minutes, so not like, you know, I, 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 I don't know. We've done longer episodes for worse, but I don't think we're going to go two hours on today's direct. But uh, we're going to break down today's Pokemon direct. But before we do, we're going to talk about what we've been playing like we do every week. Um, but before I do that, I must thank our wonderful Patreon producers. These are the folks that make PSVG go. Um, and for those of you that didn't know, every month... All of our patrons are entered into the PSVG patron lottery. Tomorrow we draw. So if you had supported us up to this point at any level, you don't have to be a producer level, at any level, if you'd supported us up to this point, tomorrow we're going to pull a name out of hat, and you get your choice of an Xbox copy of Anthem, Yakuza 6 on PlayStation 4, or a gift card to any console of your choice. So that'll be going out tomorrow. So those are the things you can kind of get in on if uh, you support us over on the Patreon at patreon.com slash PSVG. Like these fine folks that go and support us at the Patreon producer level. So thank you, Coach Hulk. Thank you, Calo, Devin, Kevin, Chris, Kyle, and Josh. Thank you, Joel, a.k.a. Professor Switch. Thank you, Barry, Cathcart, and Paul Calico. Without you guys... These shows, um, they don't happen, and they definitely don't happen at this quality. They don't happen at this at, at this regularity, at this consistency, and they definitely do not have their own podcast feeds. The OT's got its own feed. The Shack has its own feed. I mean, Board with Video Games has their own feed. Like, that definitely doesn't happen. So, like, without these folks, none of that happens. We're just back on the old master feed where every show comes on one feed. You know, which I still like. I still like, I still, I still follow the master feed, but I understand a lot of people have their favorite shows and without them, we wouldn't have it. So thank you guys for supporting the show. Okay. Ryan, as we kick off Shaq every week, what have you been playing? Uh, I've been getting, uh, down and dirty with the final fantasy. Nine. Oh, not you too. Um, so first, first we've Jake come over here and start talking about forever <laughs> old game. And now you come over and start talking about, okay. Okay. There's a reason the NOS crew, like, I'll dove in on this one, and we're, we're playing through it. It's my first time playing it. I am a fan of Final Fantasy VIII the most, so... Um, but nine, I enjoyed it. I did beat it. I kind of powered through it, and, and I enjoyed it. It wasn't wasn't my, my baby eight, but uh, I love I love what we have. Uh, to, uh, I love what they did with this game. Um, I didn't get too attached to the characters, but enough to make me cry at the end, so I, it's definitely involved in some emotional nice. capacity. Nice! Wow! So. Wow! I can count on... <laughs> Less than one hand, the amount of games that have ever brought me anywhere close to being teary-eyed. Um, you know, that's that's a rare feat. So that, that's awesome, man. Any any reason in particular? Is it just the story or is it the characters? Um, just the happiness at the end. Like, there's... there's I don't want to give any spoilers or anything, especially with people playing it right now, but it's just... It's got a good ending. Um, it's, it's very sad, but um, there's happiness, too, amidst the sadness. I think it's what gets me the most. Tears of joy, huh? <laughs> yep, yep. Um, so I asked Jacob the same thing, and I'll ask you, how do you think it holds up? Because the reason that I asked that is when these were announced, um, mm-hmm. I made several mentions. The last thing that I want to do is play some old PlayStation 1 games um, from, from a series I don't like. Now, I'm not saying I don't play old games. 
you know, give me some hot shots, I'm going to play me some hot shots. I'll play Clock Tower. Like, there are things that I like, but I've never really been into the Final Fantasy stuff. And the idea mm-hmm. of getting those old RPGs with those menus and those, you know, inventory management systems, all that, like, it's just, mm, it's not for me. Learning the mechanics, like, you know, Xenoblade is, like, probably the ultimate and complicated menus that I've known. Um, but it, it's, it's, there's some things you can miss, like, we've been playing for weeks and Jacob only just found out about abilities. We've mm. told him about it, but he didn't know anything about how to equip abilities or anything. That does um, sound so, very Xenoblade-ish. I, I can imagine a lot of people playing Xenoblade for a long time without knowing anything about Infinity Chart. That sounds um, about right. But they made it extremely accessible with the grinding and everything. Like You can put it on fast-forward and run through to places. You can turn off battles. You can have battles do like maximum damage, so you can grind really fast. Like If you want to enjoy the, just enjoy the story. They've made this completely accessible to you. Like if you hate RPGs, like this will expedite it so much, and you'll actually get to experience that story. Whereas if you hated grinding, like it wouldn't have been accessible to you in the past. They've made it a lot better for RPGs being able to do that. Yeah, I was I was asking uh, Jacob. I think these are ports of the mobile versions. They've got all that speed up stuff where you can bypass like mm-hmm. random encounters and just kind of quickly get through the game, which is really neat. I appreciate that. Definitely a welcome addition to these older uh, older style RPGs. It's definitely needed for today's day and age. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, like, um, because of the Switch as a tablet, I know here in the shack we've talked for at, almost at nauseum is how many mobile ports we either expect to be coming um, or have already came um, to the console. Um, but in this regard, there are a lot of mobile ports of really good games, old games that they've brought to mobile, that they've redone. You know, like the Grand Theft Auto series comes to mind. Um, I would welcome all of those things on Switch. So it's really cool that you uh, you found a gym. How much did you uh, pay for Final Fantasy IX? Uh, I think it was like $21 or some change. Or something not like bad. That, so. And not full bad recommended? Recommended by yeah. Ryan? You got the, the NOS yeah, recommendation? great story. I liked it better than 7, which I'm going to get to experience that again. So hopefully that will be play a Final Fantasy. You're going to play them all? Um, Hopefully. I mean, it's not 8, so I mean... <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I can't say how much I love eight enough, but <laughs> that was okay. my first one. So <laughs> okay, um, well, I've started playing. Uh, I played the Toad DLC um, that that came out. I bought that. It's uh, five bucks, and I played the first level. You only get the first level, so I do like that they have it separated from the main game. So you're gonna update to the game, and now you boot up the game, and there's a little separate tunnel that comes in. And it's like these are the extra challenges, and uh, I did play it co-op, which is a little weird. Because everybody has their own mouse cursor, so if you use the motion controls, like, there's these little circles that are kind of, like, moving. My daughter, like, spazzed the screen with her, so I was like, that's a little weird. Um, and then also, you know, like, just having, I don't know, it feels like you, with co-op, you play the game a little bit more aggressively and a little faster pace. Because, like, both people are kind of, you know, I don't know, fighting for it is not saying the right word, but you have two people in the, on, on this little map with the same kind of goal, you're both kind of running towards the ladder. You know, so like you, you both kind of get in each other's way, plus the enemies. It was, it was pretty neat. It was pretty neat. Um, I'm not sure if it's my favorite way to play the game, but I'm glad I, I'm glad that I bought it. And uh, it was a, a neat first level, which I enjoyed. Um, finding all the posters and doing all that was really good. So I'm looking forward to the DLC that drops this month um, because we've got a little bit here until Yoshi comes. And then we got a little bit after Yoshi until Box Boy comes. So kind of like last year, I feel like I might be hitting a lull here with my Nintendo Switch, because I, I got to admit, I've been playing so much Anthem and, and things on my Xbox. I have not been playing my Switch nearly as much, and the reason being is I've kind of played a lot of things, you know, like I'm not really in the mood to play many things right now over there. So much, in fact, that I actually started playing Fire Emblem Fates again. Um, because I got a new 3DS, um, which is, uh, I was telling the story to Caroline, we were off air last week, because it was uh, kind of new. I went to play disc golf last week. We got outside and like it rained here in Georgia for like twelve straight days. Like the first day the sun came wow. up, I just wanted to go outside, like do anything <laughs> yeah. with sunshine. So I went and played some disc golf with my friend, uh, my best friend, and his roommate. And his roommate was talking about Pokemon and how he bought a 3DS for Pokemon and how he liked Pokemon and all that. Um, but then how he never he never plays it anymore. He played Sun and Moon and that was it. And he never played it again. And he started talking about how, you know, they, they've got an Xbox. They're playing, like, Apex Legends and all these Battle Royale games in Fortnite. So um, I told him, that you know, I was like, yeah, I've got the Call of Duty game. Um, then it's got a blackout. And he was telling me, he's like, yeah, I've, I've read you know, reviews and checked out YouTube videos of that. And I was like, yeah, you know, I bought it and I, I played it a bit. But, you know, it's not really doing it for me. Like, I'm not really digging it. And he goes, well, um, would you trade it? 
And I was like, yeah, I mean, what do you want? And he was like, I, I'll give you my 3DS for it. So I traded a copy of Call of Duty Black Ops, <laughs> Black Ops for a 3DS, which I thought was a sweet deal. <laughs> like, I yeah, was like, uh, sure, here's a game for a system. Um, it's really nice, too. It was like, it's got uh, the Blastoise plates. Like, he got the new Nintendo 3DS with the Pokemon plates. Those Pokemon mm. plates are worth way more than either one of those two things. Like, they're worth more than the system, and they're worth more than the game. Yeah. And I told him that, too. I was like, you know, you can sell these. He's like, I don't care. So uh, I came home, and I tortured my son with those... Nice! Yeah, 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 yeah! Yes! Oh, <laughs> oh you perked my interest. Because I put uh, Fire Emblem plates on mine, because I was playing the game, Very obviously. Nice. But then these are the plates that they came with. So, awesome. And my son is a huge Blastoise fan. Like, that is his thing! So, yeah. um... So I, I promptly came home and tortured him about it uh, for a day and a half. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I, I, I started playing it. And I really, I was, this is getting back to my main point, what I was telling Caroline that I really enjoyed is I really enjoyed the 3D effect. You know, like when it's, it's like funny to say because it is kind of like a gimmick. But mm-hmm. I, I've often said this and I believe it's true. When you put them side by side, games with the 3D effect on, like they're brighter. They just have like a little pop, like like the 3D effect just brightens the game a little bit. It's just a nice, you know, little pop of, of color, of brightness. Like everything gets a little more rounded. I'm not sure why, but like I've, I've, I'm not sure if you've ever done this. Maybe, maybe this makes me sound like a crazy person. I've sat there with the, the console like really close to my eyes and just toggled it on, like not even all the way on, just, just toggle it on and toggle it off. And, and I've seen it, you know, like, I'm like, mm-hmm. it looks better this way. So anyway, having played with the 3D vision on, I was like, man, I really like having this instead of my 2DS. So I sold my 2DS and, uh, and I moved everything to this one. And this one is just the thing that I have. So like I do with all of my things, I just keep moving them around as, uh, as the impulse drives me. So I'm back to the, the new Nintendo 3DS and I use some money to buy me some plates and, um, and just like some games, like just gift cards and stuff you know i just kind of Mm -hmm. re-put it back into stuff and um but yeah i was happy that that had back so i started playing fire emblem and uh, i never did birthright i played conquest all the way through because because female corn because that's that's where she is she's on the box she's on the cart Mm -hmm. that was her like you know that's where she lies so i I picked that pass so you know i i've been feeling i've been feeling the urge this impulse to buy fire emblem um the special edition fates the special edition which cart is going crazy right now it's like three hundred dollars it's insane yeah we had one come into GameStop the other day and it was just like wow that's (sighs) can you can you sell it to me can you hold it because i've been wanting to buy one forever (laughs) but i like i refuse to pay that much if i had a GameStop that would sell it to me i would buy in a heartbeat but i cannot last like a day yeah i mean (laughs) i'm not paying two hundred dollars for a 3ds game but i would pay 80 for it like like i would because Mm -hmm. i want it so bad but anyway so I just bought the digital pass, which was 20 bucks, and I just started playing Birthright and having a blast. I've already, I'm through chapter 10. Um, Birthright's easier. Like, it's definitely, it feels easier. Um, and I feel, I feel like maybe that's another reason why I didn't pick it in the past. I think maybe I read that somewhere that it's easier, but it, it just seems to be route the enemy. You know, it's just kind of like win. Like, everything's win. You're not, like, controlling multiple points or, you know, win while saving these other two people or anything like that. It's just kind of, like, beat the other people, um, mm-hmm. which is kind of nice because I'm, I'm, like, this is my second playthrough, right? So I'm kind of just wanting to go through the motions. I'm just wanting to experience the story again, you know? And I'm not wanting to dive down and get all tactical with it right now. It's it's old game, um, but it's been enjoyable. And the reason I've been playing it, I should have prefaced this, the reason I've been playing it, Jack has the flu. So my son has uh, influenza type A, tested for type A flu. And the poor little guy. We went to see Metric mm-hmm. this past weekend. Man, I was at a concert. Me and the wife, we had a blast. Went to a hotel room. Got a call at 3 in the morning from our babysitter. Who's Jack's running 102 fever. So we had to leave. I had been out partying and rocking and having adult beverages. And I had to, like, leave the hotel in the middle of the night. <laughs> so my wife's driving us to get our son. It was an absolute mess. Like, as tired as could be. Um, so... Yeah, I guess in the South, you know, mm-hmm. bless his heart is the, the right term. Poor little guy was just burning up, not feeling well. So I've actually been home all week taking care of him. Um, so I had to call in sick and take the time off to get him to the doctor, get him checked out, and then stay here while my wife went to work. So I have been sitting here playing Fire Emblem. Like when I'm not playing uh, Anthem, I'm sitting around on the couch, you know, sitting around with him, and I'm playing Fire Emblem on my new 3DS, and uh, I'm enjoying it. So that's what I've been doing. Uh, 
on Nintendo this this week. Okay, so let's move into our news block, and let's break down today's Pokemon Direct. Now, for those of you who have no idea what Pokemon Day is, Pokemon Day, February 27th, 1996, marks the day 23 years ago that Nintendo released Pokemon in Japan. Can you believe it's been 23 years we've been playing these games? That's just crazy. That makes me feel real old. That makes me feel real old. 23 years ago. <laughs> Pokemon Red and Blue. <sighs> wow. Um, but today they took uh, to the Direct in six minutes and they announced the new game. Pokemon Shield and Pokemon Sword. Coming to Nintendo Switch this fall. Uh, the games take place in the Galar region and features distinguished environments like the countryside, the city, mountains, mines, caves, all that good stuff. They showed off a bunch of art, which we'll talk about, and then they announced the three brand new starter Pokemon that we get for Gen 8. So we get Grookey, a grass-type chimp Pokemon, Scorebunny, a fire-type rabbit Pokemon, and is it Sobble? Sobble. Sobble, a water-type lizard Pokemon. <sighs> Alright, so the first thing I want to say is I'm glad they didn't do a tutorial on how to catch a Pokemon. Because mm -hmm. that's what they did with Pokemon Sun and Moon. Like They spent you know, 15 minutes talking about how to catch a Pokemon. Um, but, you know, they, they got in and out. They showed a trailer for the game. They showed this real, I would call it weird, like real-life trailer with the Pokemon you know, like where they were just cartoon animations, which I don't feel like I would have much rather seen them in game. I just put it that way. Like I, I thought the in game footage looked much better. Um, mm -hmm. But before we break all this down, I mean, what did you think about the overall direct period? Um, I think it was it, it did what it needed to do. It, it just got us hyped a little bit for what's coming. Uh, it didn't give us too much information. Uh, we don't know any mechanics. We don't know if we can turn on the feature to catch Pokemon and see Pokemon walking through the grass instead of the wild encounters or. Like, they haven't talked about anything mechanic-wise, but they just wanted to show you, hey, there's something new out there, it looks great, it's on Switch, and here's three new starters to, to think about, you know. Yeah. Just enough to get the hype going. That's exactly right. You're exactly right. That's all they did. Um, I feel like we should start with... I feel like we should start with the... Um, the graphics because that that that's really what was on display for this the first thing was on display was the graphics um they showed off the new settings they showed off the new i would call them like new perspective new vantage points the new pokemon everything um my main takeaway is this is this this game appears at first glance from our first impression this game appears like what a console version of pokemon should be does it look revolutionary or groundbreaking or does it change the way we think about pokemon at a style level no it doesn't it looks like an hd version um a step up from pokemon sun and moon um which is what i was expecting so i'm not that let down about this however there are plenty of people that are and we've got a question we're going to talk about that in a minute um but stylistically what did you think about it and we should mention that galar like this region is very english it's very UK. Like, the whole yes. island looks like the UK. Um, the industrial city, you know, kind of has this industrial revolution vibe. A lot of people are calling it steampunk. I wouldn't go that far. I didn't see any, like, punk version of steampunk. Industrial. Industrial is a nice way of putting it. But everything is, like, beautiful countryside, um, you know, like, rolling grass, farms. The press release here, by the way, the press release uh, made mention of the industrial thing multiple times. Made me wonder if, like, maybe we're going to have, like, some job mini games or something. Like, are you going to do some farming and do some factory things or anything with your Pokemon or maybe, like, any puzzle elements? Because they, they seem to keep mentioning that that's a thing. And I'm wondering if that might play into the overall story. But, um, yeah, I, I really like the, the watercolor, you know, painery type style that they're going for. If you take one specific you know, scene and you analyze it, you'll real the textures aren't detailed. You know, it's, this is not 2019 modern big video game, you know, but when you see it in motion, it's absolutely beautiful. It's colorful. You know, it works. It, it is Pokemon. Um, what did you think about the graphics? Um, I thought it was very pretty. Um, not top of the line, like you said, um, but still uh, beautiful. I think the thing that, that captured me the most was like showing the trainer walking into the stadium with all the lights in the stadium and like that that giving that really bombastic like almost pokemon stadium feel to it and i'm like if i can have that pokemon stadium experience on the switch and still playing a regular pokemon game i'll be pretty happy about it i mean i don't necessarily need open world as long as i can get that pokemon stadium feel 
and still mm. be playing a Pokemon game, Pokemon story game, actual mainline game. We had some discussion about the open world uh, esque, the open world nature of this trailer because they showed some environments, they showed the map, and we actually had several folks in our Discord talking that they got the impression that it was an open world. I didn't, but I think that's my mm. years of playing Pokemon. I definitely saw paths and I definitely saw gates. What I think we saw were, like Sun and Moon, big areas that you could explore. But I really feel like, you tell me if you think this is, if this is incorrect, but a lot of the camera angles that they showed in, in this trailer, you know, like it doesn't look like we have the ability to control the camera, but it seems closer to the player. You're more zoomed into the character model and it's kind of down. It's not quite over the shoulder, but it's more in that than the traditional top down Pokemon angle, which I think makes those areas that we've come to see, you're kind of seeing them in line versus, you know, from the, from like a bird's eye look. I think yeah. that's going a long way to make them look a little bit bigger. It does start to give that that feel like it's almost about to transition to a different type of game. Kind um, of. It's still Pokemon, but it almost feels like you're running through a third-person game that's that's different in, in, in that world. Um, I, I do like that. I feel like we're on the edge of something big uh, as Pokemon is evolving um, on the Switch, but uh, this is the next stepping stone, and um, it may not be what some people want it to be, but I'm really glad that, that we have this coming. Uh, you know, new gen. A lot more Pokemon to catch. I still have to catch them all. That's my big thing when I play Pokemon games. I have uh, every single you're one. That, you're in that Caro. I'm the collector. Nice, nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Um, speaking of Caro, who is uh, all caps in our chat, she's she wants to make sure that I correct that it's painterly, not painery. And uh, she's hijacking our notes. She's live typing. So while we tried to give her the week off, she apparently can't take it. She's just here anyway, inserting her ideas into the show. She says that uh, for her, she feels like this style reminds her of a Harvest Moon game. I had mentioned if anybody's seen the screens of the Yokai, Yokai Watch 4 that's coming to Switch, it looks a lot like that too. Like it, they're very similar in style. Um, yeah, it looks really good. It looks really good. Um, you mentioned mechanics. We saw a lot of things that, um, if you played Let's Go, are different. It doesn't look like any of the Let's Go stuff is coming over. Random encounters are back. You're not seeing anything in the open world or in the map. You're, you know, you're not seeing the Pokemon run around. I will say that it. Do you think that it's going to make the game feel like deserted or empty? Um, I don't know. I mean, they went into this saying they were going to be doing a classic, traditional yep. like Pokemon sure. experience. So there's no surprises there. I kind of ha- held out hope that. All the people saying, oh, we love this new style, that they give a feature where you could do both. Um, and I'm still not ruling that out. Uh, you know, just toggle it on and off, depending Ooh. on how you want to do it, um, and play how you like to play. Um, but we'll see what that if that happens. But I'm glad that just the traditional battling and stuff and, and weakening a Pokemon is there. Um, that's, it's the grinding stuff that I, I can enjoy from time to time. Like, I spend hours just playing right before I went to bed and stay up it's way too late. Food. Yeah, it's comfort food. It's good old-fashioned comfort food. Um, Yeah, I I was thinking that because one of the things I really enjoyed about Let's Go uh, in terms of the mechanic, I realized that the the mechanic was built because you level up by catching Pokemon. But by seeing them on the map, it really made the world feel alive. Things were moving constantly. There were things to dodge and things to account for versus you just running through like an empty safari zone. And uh, I I don't anticipate that to be the case, but it'll be on... Nintendo to show us a little bit, you know, to show us more NPCs and not just trainer NPCs either, you know, and not just like mindless say the same thing over and over NPCs. I'd like to see NPCs that move and not stand there. You know, I, I'd like to see them move around. And I'd also like to see NPCs that, that give away some story and, and maybe give you some side questy ish things, kind of like something like that. That would be really welcomed. If we're thinking like new gen, they made a mention in the trailer that they're trying to take new ideas and do things differently. And that'd be one of the things that I, if we're going to do a traditional Pokemon game on console, um, big, brighter, new visuals, that'd be one thing that I, I'd like to, I think could really kind of, you know, just mix it up a little bit, provide a little, a uh, little, little bit more to do. So, so we've got that. We get our, 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 our battle mechanics come back. We're going to play the same old Pokemon game that we that we know and love. Um, so Troy asks, I'm a bit let down from today's announcements. Will Pokemon ever evolve from the same game I've been playing since the 90s? Caro says, no, deal with it. It's amazing. <laughs> Ryan, would you like to add your own comments to 
um, I like the old formula. Um, I, I like that we were able to... I don't like going slow. Like I don't want to be back in first gen where I'm walking everywhere. I want to be able to run fast and get places faster. But um, I like the old formula. I haven't played enough of Let's Go. Um, it's kind of a backlog game for me right now. Um, I haven't even beaten Brock yet. I was just trying to... <laughs> figure out the shiny hunting thing and i just found a random field and i was just kind of working on that and then i had other games distract me <laughs> around christmas time so that's a lot of um, fun but i've watched a lot of videos and just really enjoyed what i've seen um even though i don't have the experience of let's go like really it's a different it's a different animal um it's let's go as a different series and how it controls and how it feels and i think that they're they're delivering on the promise of this game being classic and that's something that I wouldn't expect them to take out or change. Um, but going forward, I would expect both, or at least one or the other, um, and have two separate branches. I don't know, but... Caro and I were hoping, actually, when we played Let's Go, and I guess we reviewed it or spoiled cast or whatever, whenever we covered it on Shaq, whatever we do here, um, we talked about how we hoped Let's Go was the, the every other year thing. We had Pokemon mm -hmm. Mainline, Pokemon Let's Go. Pokemon yep. Mainline and Pokemon Let's Go. And it doesn't need to be a remake, but just a, a new story in Pokemon Let's Go. I think it'd be really cool. Um, to answer, Troy, um, I largely agree with you guys. I agree with you and Caroline. I think it's worth mentioning that, you know, it's been 23 years they've been making these games. They sell us two copies of the games to most people. So it seems like they, they kind of know what they're doing and they're doing it well. They, they constantly sell a lot. So there's a big market for them. I will say that I, I understand the sentiment. It's often uh, a term that I bring up on podcasts over time here at PSVG is I feel like sometimes people age out of Nintendo. You know, it's like mm -hmm. you just become too much of an adult. And I feel like this might be, you know, in that where you see all these people, they want this big, giant open world Pokemon. They want this mature Pokemon. What they're, what they're really saying, I think the, the root of what they're trying to say is that they want a Pokemon that still resonates with them. And I feel like what they have to remember is that Pokemon is a game that specifically resonates with children. And it's really not for 30-year-old man babies that want to, <laughs> you know, remember what it was like to be 10 again. Like, they're not going to do that. Um, the thing that makes Pokemon special is that it is a game for everyone. And that there are shiny elements and things that keep the seasoned trainer still playing while still being open and, and accessible to a brand new player. And if they ever go away from that, I think that'd be a huge mistake from the game completely. That'd be a huge mistake. Even changing something as small as, you know, the let's go mechanic, I, I was worried might be too much for young players, but they did it simply, you know, and it, it needs to be simple. Pokemon needs to be simple. We don't need complex Pokemon. I understand, you know, you grew up video games, you, you played a shooter, you played Goldeneye, and now you play Gears. Well, you know, not everything has to follow that. Not everything has to be open world and not everything has to be, you know, bigger bigger, grander, more explosions, you know, more mature. Not everything has to go on that path. Some things can just be. And I, I think Pokemon is a, is a, a company or a, a game franchise that should just be left alone. It, it does what it does well. And, they, you know, they like other Nintendo franchises, they make the graphics better, they implement a new gimmick, you do Z battles, do motion controls, here's a Pokeball, you know, like, they do things like that. But largely, it's the same game. Now, um, because of this, that means it's a single-player experience, most likely. I mean, such from battling. Yeah, I don't it's know. It's not going to have that co-op like that you had from Let's Go. So that's that's a little sad. I'd love that. to see it play co-op. I think it might. I mean, they didn't. So you, they didn't mention anything about how this game plays. Yeah, they did say that they're 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 working on new things. They said they're working on new Pokemon things in 2019, which I think is exciting. I'd love like a Pokemon Rumble or you know uh, something something I don't know whatever they come up a shuffle some more things like that I think those things are cool um, but we didn't see anything about gameplay I presume the Pokeball will work with it you'll be able to play this game with the Pokeball I, I believe they're not going to just throw that accessory away it's <laughs> oh, going gosh. to have some sort of Pokemon Go integration you're going to be able to transfer Pokemon back and forth um, they may Pokemon Bank is my big one. Yeah, that's the thing. I me, mean, Caroline, and my, Caroline and I have been talking about Pokemon Bank for a very long time. Um, I think Pokemon Bank will come back. I do, mm -hmm. but I've often said this kind of as like a just somebody to stir the pot with Caro, you know, skid her a little off edge. What if they turn Pokemon Go into Pokemon Bank? Like, what if they use that as the Pokemon Bank? I, I don't think that's crazy. I don't think that's an insane idea. You know, like if they keep letting you transfer Pokemon from the game to the mobile app, if they let you transfer mm -hmm. back and forth, 
it very well could be a replacement for Pokemon Bank, or they could release a Pokemon Go like update, um, or or they do a Pokemon Bank proper app that you actually mm-hmm. just use on your phone. I like, think that is the natural evolution of where that would go. Um, it, instead of being tied to a system, um, now if it's tied to your Nintendo account, your My Nintendo, like, and they're, yeah. they're you're always your Pokemon. That's pretty cool to never lose those as long as you have your account. Yeah, that's, and they could use the cool. exact same functionality that they already have. They already have it in place with Let's Go. Maybe they let you do like my rewards. You know, like maybe you get some points or something, or every you know for a hundred or thousand platinum points, you get a Charizard. Like, there's things you could do here, and they could <laughs> sell it. You know, like what do we pay for Pokemon Bank? Like five eight, five dollars a year? Yeah, it's not bad at all. Um, and I don't see them rolling that into the Nintendo, like giving it Switch free online. with the. With Switch Online. I don't see them doing that. I think it's, they're a separate company from that, so they want to have their own revenue stream. So that's $5 is probably going to stay. Yeah. But And I think Pokemon players, I would pay for that. Especially, especially, let's say, especially, let's take it one step further. What if you could do, like, some sort of, like, little touch trainer mini game inside of Pokemon Bank to, like, level up your Pokemon? Maybe you could, like, pet them or give them hats or do, like, some sort of tap battle. You could do that and take your Pokemon with you on your phone, and then you go put them in your game. Like, tell me people wouldn't pay $5 for that. I'm totally getting flashbacks. The little Pikachu, like, yeah, oh my gosh, you <laughs> exactly the exact same idea. You carry your Pokemon with you. You know, they, they put an ad out there every year for the new Pokemon game. You know, like, they, yeah. This makes sense. Um, so we'll see. We haven't heard anything about it. I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will. I I, I mean, I, w- I don't want to say I don't think because, Lord, that's bit me in the butt here. <laughs> I, I don't think this game will launch without us knowing what the solution to Pokemon Bank is. There will be a solution, I think, by then. I think. Yeah. I think there will be. <laughs> um, so let's talk about these starters. You know, we crossed over them. So we've got Grookey, Score Bunny, and Sobble. Um, you know, one of the things... Going back to Troy's question, will it ever be the same game from the beginning? You know, I, I will say, you know, they don't always have to start with the grass fire water type. They could have mixed it up a little bit. Um, I'm not, I mean, I, I get that they do this all the time. It's iconic. I don't mind it. But, like, it would have been interesting to start with, like, you know, lesser known, maybe like a poison, a ghost, and a steel type or a dragon type or something. Mix it up a little. I'm not sure why they always do this. I think it's just kind of like the way they do things. I think it's kind of maybe the the rock paper scissors of the three mm-hmm. three types, and, and there may be types out there that do that same trifecta, but um, and it's just what they've always done. Tradition. That's yep. very Japanese. And I have, uh, so, what do you think about the three, just in general? What do you think about the starters? I like them. Um, at first, they weren't too. They didn't grab me too much. Um, I hear I really a lot of like... people say that, and I wanted. I was actually trying to bait you. I wasn't baiting you into saying that because. Yeah. I saw a lot of people say that today, and one of the things, not saying this is your opinion, but one of the things that I, I heard today was, these three are not like Charmander, Squirtle, Bulbasaur, and to which I wanted to like reply back to you, like, well, yeah, they haven't, they don't have a cartoon yet, like you haven't, <laughs> you haven't ad- adapted to them like right. Charmander, Bulbasaur, and Squirtle yet, like they just, we just saw them for the first time. So I'm sorry to interrupt think, you, but continue. Oh, that's good. I think part of that was, um, like you said, the art style that they used for that. They used basically what they the 3D generator they use for the Pokemon cards. Mm-hmm. And that, the, the art they use from, from those 3D models. Um, and you can see those in the commercials for the Pokemon TCG. Um, and they use that same idea. Um, and I think if they would have shown, like, in-game... Um, I like seeing the 2D models better. Um, I got I a better too. feel for them than I did with the 3D models, which is odd to say, as we're going into this you know 3D Pokemon world as we've, we've gone in with Moon and, and Sun and what have you. Um, but... I really do think that they did a good job here. I want to see how they evolve, definitely. Like, uh, who doesn't For want sure. to see yeah. how they progress? Um, we were talking about, um, like, Rookie. We thought, well, you know, he, he kind of gives, like, a he has that stick in his, his hair, so he kind of gives me that, like, what if he becomes, like, a, a Monkey King sla- slash Goku style, like, <laughs> grass fighting character or something. It's pretty good. Instead of, a, instead of a cloud, it's a bush that he rides around on or something. I can definitely um, we, see Score Bunny being a fire fighting type. Like, with see, the legs, the thumper, like, know. the whole idea. I could see that being a thing. And that does bring me to an interesting thought. Um, I see almost s- stat types in these characters. Um, I feel like the fire Pokemon seems more speed build. Like, that, that kind of idea, that build. And, like, you know, the water starter is more stealth, like, evasion type. 
And then I think the monkey's more power type. Um, and, and from that idea, like, you know, sword and shield, like, defense and offense. Sure. Like, that kind of idea, like, that may have been something that they, they were kind of leaning towards. I don't know, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but it's kind of a thought I had. <laughs> Who's going to be your starter? Not having not seen the, uh, with with your ability to change your mind when you see how they evolve. Right. Um, the one that first grabbed me was Square Bunny. Um, I just, I don't know. I just, I was thrilled to see a bunny, a fire bunny. Um, My man. I like, I like that the, the the fire comes from the feet, and you saw like the singeing yeah. in the grass. Yeah. I like that. The kicks, the kicks are awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm on the Square Bunny squad as well. Uh, that looked dope. So, uh, my son is on Team Sobel. He likes okay. the water type. Uh, he was he asked me, and I, I honestly think he was maybe reading in too much. But that little cartoon animation they showed, you know, Sobel mm-hmm. like basically like cloaks himself like Predator, becomes invisible. Yep. Any chance he's like a ghost type? I don't know. That this is the first thing. thing my son said. He goes, oh, "He's a ghost type. He can disappear." I was like, "I even it think that." Also be, it that is such next level Pokemon thinking than what I am capable <laughs> of having. <laughs> it can also be a psychic ability to could be. You know, yeah. refract light around you. Um, but that's kind of interesting. Or it could be this could even become a type that they haven't mentioned yet. Maybe there's a new type in this game. I just assumed Who it was knows? water thing. Like he just you know, like, <laughs> like I was like, yeah, it makes sense. He's a water type. He can look like water. <laughs> and maybe he can like cloak in water or in a rainstorm yeah. or something, you know. Who knows? Oh man. So we have a new Pokemon game. Like we finally know what it is. Well I'm sure we'll get um we'll get some huge rollout. I, I'm not sure if it'll be at E three. They have a lot to detail at E three and you know like a lot of people are asking, like, why this Pokemon news wasn't in the direct last week. The Pokemon company likes the stage. They don't yeah. like sharing the stage. They don't share the stage with with games that might, you know, smash characters and things like that. They want everything to be on Pokemon, even outside of this holiday. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if we saw a, a trailer at E3, you know, like something. And then they do, like, a direct, like, the, the week after or the week before. <laughs> you know, they're going to have their own little thing. They're going to do their own little Pokemon thing, which is good. I like that. I like that they do do their own little thing i think i think pokemon is its own thing you know it's like nintendo and the pokemon you know so and i like that at, they they did say hey we're working on other projects other pokemon projects than just this they didn't have to say anything they just had to say hey we're doing other stuff too so look forward to that other things that are coming out this year mm-hmm. which is exciting that's why i was thinking you know, the, the pokemon shuffles the pokemon rumbles i would love it i would seriously mystery love it. dungeons and I would no love i don't rumble. want those I love Rumble. Uh, yes, I, love I would like a new Pokemon and Rumble. Kasha and oh, I collected so much of that. <laughs> yeah, I would like a new Rumble, but not, I'm, I'm not into the Mystery Dungeon thing. But, you know, you know, give me a match yeah. three game or I would love a um, Pokemon Puzzle League on Switch. Oh, you're talking my language. Yeah, if they did anything like that at all, that would be really, really good. So anything like that I'm good for. If they want to do more DLC for Pokemon, we're down for that too. Like, we still like Pokemon. I know nobody else does, but we still do. So... <laughs> Yeah, anyway, before we move on, you got anything else? Anything else on Pokemon Day 2018? Oh, you know 2019? What? That does it. That yeah, does it. Covered everything. Not not quite two hours like we did for the uh, Switch trailer, but, you know, pretty close. Good good 20 minutes there. Um, I want to talk about some May releases because we had a lot of news come out this past week. So Saints Row the Third drops on Switch May 10th. Resident Evil 0, Resident Evil 1, and Resident Evil 4 drop May 21st. So... All four of these games come out in the same month that Assassin's Creed 3 comes out, and like four days after Box Boy comes out, um, which is interesting. Um, should be a pretty packed month. I think it's a little light until we get yeah. there, um, but until we get there, like it'll it'll start ramping up through the summer. Um, any of those interest you? You're gonna grab any of these? Um, the one, the only one that really resonates with me there is uh, Resident Evil 4. I enjoyed mm. it so much, and if they have, I mean, I I don't know why. It's the just, HD uh, version. It was that GameCube demo that I played that just hooked me. <laughs> yes, yes. What if I told you I saw this today on a recent era? I'm not sure if it's been confirmed or not. I know it hasn't. It's not here on the U.S. side. I saw that these, I think, are coming up in U.K. It's $30 a piece, the Resident Evil games. That's a lot. Considering that the Wii game on Wii U was 20 I, th- I want to say the HD versions I asked on our Discord. I don't think anybody responded to me. I think the other ones are 22 I think. I think that. But, um... I'm not going to get the res- I have the Resident Evil games on Xbox and PlayStation. They're they're on Plus and they give them away on live and you know like so I'm not going to buy these. Saints Row the 3rd though is an interesting one because it's an open world like GTA game. Now, mm-hmm. here's what makes it hard. Xbox just released this on Game Pass like a week ago. This is like Xbox's thing. Every time the Switch gets a third-party game, they put it in the Game Pass. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but 
if it reviews well, like if people tell me like, hey, it runs really good, like everything is as it should be, I might get it anyway because I'm interested in picking up a sandboxy, you know, fool around, blow up some cars, be stupid for 20 minutes type of game on my Switch. That's a game, that's the type of game that I will always play. Like if I'm at a doctor's office or, you know, like five years from now, just like Fates, right? Just like me with Fates. Like if I'm sitting here and I'm babysitting sick kids, anything like that at all, like I will just mess around. That's a mess around with game. I will boot that thing up and just mess around with it. Just, you know, make stuff happen. So, um, so look forward to that in May. Uh, tomorrow, which is out now. This is out now by the time you're listening to this. Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes DLC Volume 1 is out. If you bought the physical edition of the game, it's included in your season pass. If you bought the digital version, you have to pay extra for this. But you get Shinobu, the assassin, as a playable character. Batman gets his own narrative adventure. But most importantly, if you didn't see our Twitter, Link's Awakening gets a brand new shirt. And you got to collect that shirt because it's awesome. It's yellow. It's got Link all over. It's beautiful. Like The (laughs) screenshot that they posted for this thing is amazing. Um, Did you play this game at all? Do you have any interest in Travis Strikes again? I haven't touched it. You're not alone. Most people aren't. I'm a big fan. Uh, Most people aren't. uh, So I get that. Um, I'm really surprised that they're letting Suda have like this much fun with Zelda. Mm. You know, this is like a new Nintendo. I mean, I think we all know that like with Switch, with the new leadership and everything, but like, and I know that Suda is making a game for them, multiple games for them. Like I get it, but still, for them to just like let somebody just like because they're not tweeting about it, I'm sure they're retweeting and things like that, you know. But like, it's very much from him. He's like, look, Zelda shirts, and he's got five of them now. Like he seems like he has a license to do whatever he wants. It's it's insane. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, that's out now, so uh, I will be playing that. So by this time next week, um, I will tell you all about it. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to beat the game again as Shinobu. I might as Bad Girl, but um, I believe Shinobu is just going to be a different character. It's probably going to feel a lot of the same, you know, like bad man and Travis felt the same, like bad has uh, bad man's got a like a bat. Travis has got a lightsaber, you know, so that's not all that different. Um, and then I wanted to have a reminder in here because we love Jason Lacey and we miss you. The Toe Jam and Earl back in the groove drops Friday for 20 bucks. And uh, they made a little news today. They made Macaulay Culkin a, a producer of the game, like brought to you by Macaulay Culkin. So, uh, that's weird and interesting. Uh, we had some discussions today on the Discord, uh, psvg.blog dash slash Discord, uh, if you want to join us. But uh, that's crazy. I think this is brilliant marketing. He's been such a, you know, like a long standout of the of the game series, as I'm told. I don't know these things because I don't follow Travis Strikes Again. But, or I mean, Travis, uh, <laughs> told you, Merle. Caroline, quit typing in the document. <laughs> Actually, I think that was me. <laughs> oh, somebody quit typing in the document. Um but yeah, so he's liked the game for so long that um, that they, they brought him in, and I and, and the, so our folks were asking like, "Hey, why why would they do this like the day before the game comes?" I was like, "Hey, to pop headlines, to pop ratings. That's why because Macaulay Culkin gets you on Polygon, you know, like <laughs> like that's why because when you do that, you know, he gets you there. Somebody's going to tweet about it, and I think they did. So that's pretty cool. Um, what do you think? Are you going to are you going to get uh, Toe Jam and Earl? I don't have any nostalgia for Toe Jam and Earl, honestly. Well, that's not true. I played a little demo in a Sears once <laughs> when I was a little kid. That's about it. So not, not enough to go off of to really want this game. I heard that um, and the whole like something about Macaulay Culkin like being name being put to the game in some way to help uh, push it a little bit more. Uh, sure. I thought that was kind of fun. Um, there is a game that hasn't been mentioned yet. It comes out tomorrow. Ooh. I speak on behalf of myself and Caro. Um, because we're both probably excited about this. I don't know. I mean, it's pretty big. Delta Rune Chapter One is going to be available on Switch to play for free. So I'm so looking forward to that. I did not play it on PC or anything like that. So I'm ready to dig in and experience it for the first time. Ah, yeah. Thank you for reminding me. I dropped that news bit to Caro today, but she, she had mentioned she had already played it. She played it on PC, and she'll mm-hmm. be waiting for the full game. But uh, that's a good pull. Definitely, it's a free game. Got all the free games, man. You get in there and get to play it. How long is it? Like an hour. I think Caroline's is like an hour or something like that. It's not that no long. idea. So, yeah. <laughs> but stuff. I am I am looking forward to it because I enjoyed uh, you know Undertale so much. I've even got I can find it. I've got this little Undertale uh, Timmy pin. I picked oh, up isn't that cute? Fan gamer, 
<laughs> nice. You'll make Hero so happy. She's going to like make sure that you come back one, one episode when she's on. Because uh, it was so hilarious that the, the Caro Undertale stuff, she was so hype and yelled at all of us about, like, basically it was a me and Jason thing. She's like, I can't believe you guys aren't excited, aren't hype. And then it was hilarious because over the following, like, six months, every time she ever, like, brought it up to anybody, they were the exact same way. Like, she couldn't find anybody. It was just like her. So, like, it started to turn. She never found you, Ryan. So it started to turn on her. Everybody was like, Caroline, it's just you. Nobody else is excited. <laughs> <laughs> you're it you're the one person so you, you, get, you get me and jacob and and caro on the podcast and it'll just be all all undertale all the time so look forward to that when undertale or when delta rune comes out in in fold we'll have you guys review it and i'll take the week off it sounds like a sweet deal all right let's wrap up here like we do every week with our shack questions that are direct from you and the first one comes from Grouchy. Yes, one actually a few weeks ago, but uh, with directs and everything, you know, it gets pushed down the list, but it's a really good time to ask this one. I feel there's no better time in history to be a gamer. How can Nintendo continue to build upon its Switch success, but also combat the fact that within a couple of years, the competition will be even further ahead hardware-wise, which will continue to lead to port issues for games too advanced to run on the Switch? Grouchy. What do you think, Ryan? Hmm. The indie and uh, port machine is still going strong with Switch, and I still don't think that that's going to die out for a while, so I think that's going to be the go-to, and being able to play on the go. There's a lot of people that live that lifestyle and don't get to game as much on TV. I happen to be one of those people. Um, like, most of the time I'm playing handheld, so... Um, I think that that's some, a major selling point still, even if it is graphically underpowered, and because it's been out for so long... Um, people are going to start seeing the switches. Oh, that's an older system. Mm -hmm. About the time when those new systems come about, so that is going to hit the switch hard a little bit. Um, we'll probably see a lot of switches traded in uh, to go towards the new, new biggest thing. Um, but I still think that it has enough enough behind it to uh, keep it going. And especially if they like even toy with the idea of a VR, like a better switch with VR. Lobo VR. Like, that would do it. Maybe cheaper option with the cardboard, you know. But we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we shall see. Um, grouchy. So I have an answer to your question, but I will say, I mean, we're going to get a more powerful switch when that time comes to. So it's not going to be nearly as good as the others for sure. It's not going to have well, somebody sent me the Xbox specs the other day or Kevin did in our discord. It's like 18 teraflops or something like something. I can't even imagine. I'm like, what does that mean? Like it's twice as powerful as the current X, but like, what does that do visually? Is that like twice as like, I have no idea. Like, is that a thing? Um, but, uh, it won't be like that, but it will be, you know, boosted. And, uh, Nintendo's games continue to sell Nintendo hardware and it'll be up to the other third parties to, you know, to, to determine if the switch market is something that they want to try and sell games on. So sure. The latest red dead may not run on it, but, you know, every company has games that do, games that will, smaller games that can. And as long as Nintendo gets enough of them, you know, if they get, you know, uh, let's say they get 5, 10 pretty good, you know, C-plus or better third-party games a year mixed in with Nintendo first party, plus their second-party stuff with exclusives and Platinum and Monolith, they'll be just fine as a library market. But you want to know the answer to this question? It's what I've been giddy about all week. I was giddy about last episode. I was giddy about Empire. The answer to this question is Game Pass and streaming. That's the answer. This is not going to be an issue at all because by the time we get 28,000 Aeroflops of power, it won't matter because you'll be able to play all the games on your Switch via the cloud. And um, it's going to be good. And folks with, with uh, fiber internet, like my buddy Ryan here, he's going to be playing all kinds of non-powerful the eight bit games on his switch through the cloud streaming. Um, but, uh, definitely I will be playing gears and halo and most importantly, Ori in the blind force. When Ori in the blind force comes to switch, you've got to play it. Ori is amazing. Ori is incredible. Super, super great game. That's the answer I to want, that question. I want cuphead and castle crashers. So castle crashers. Yes. <laughs> oh man. If they, so if we, when this happens and we get to play castle crashers weird, have you never, have you played through it? Have you played the game? Oh yes. Many, many. Oh, okay. Times. Okay. As I say, cause if you have it, we're doing that together. Um, but even if you have, we should probably still at least make for a drunk night where we all play Castle I mean. Crashers. That would be great. Um, next question. Will Bowser do what the Reginator couldn't and give me my mother three? That comes from Kevin. What do you think, Ryan? 
Um, I've played very little of Earthbound, so I don't really have much of an opinion on this. Um, I hope that that happens for fans, because people have been begging for it forever. Um, at this point, it, I hope that it's, you know, it, it's worth the wait. They do something other than just a straight port at this point. But, hey, I, I'm not going to complain. Like, I'm sure he knows this, and I will say that, you know, most people probably realize this too, but, you know, there were rumors circulating last week that there was... Uh, a remake or a release of Mother 3 in the plans, and it was scrapped due to controversial content and some licensing stuff, which mm -hmm. I think has been the reason the whole time why we haven't had it. Eventually, they'll put the ROM out there. Eventually. Um, but I think it'll be at a time when they need to, just like they did with Earthbound Beginnings. It won't be at a time when they don't need it. You know, why why, why burn that card when you're selling you know, the best-selling console of the month? You've got all these games coming out, and you're riding this wave. Why burn that card now? No, you know, no, 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 no. Wait for the next Wii U, then burn that card. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see them doing, if they do a classic line um, with that, you know, pl the platform that was on, like, they do, like, a Star Fox 2, where sure. they release Mother 3 on that. I can see them doing that. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. What franchise that you wouldn't normally associate with Switch would you like to see on the system? And that comes from Delvin. Delvin Cox over at the Delvin Cox Experience. Ryan? Hmm. I, I don't know. I was kind of going back and forth on this one. Like, I, I want to see more franchise, like, shooter franchise. Like, I mean, you could say anything Xbox. Like, I'd love to see that on Switch, of course. Like, Halo, I'd enjoy playing that. Like, if I could play Reach with friends, um, like, just the, the Horde mode or what have you, like, I would have a lot of fun with that because that's what I enjoy, you know. But um, as far as, like, something just, like, off the wall, like, random, I'd like to see the Switch have... Um, it's not really associated with Switch. I mean, it was it existed on GameCube, it existed on Wii, but no one ever cared about it. And that was Dance Dance Revolution. Dance Dance like, Revolution. I love Dance Dance Revolution. So I'd love GDR to have Wabo, baby, put those like metallic <laughs> things in there, and you dance on the cardboard. It's like going back in the day, '90s hip hop, man. Oh man, throw it on the cardboard box. Let's get it done. <laughs> that's ridiculous. That's that's absurd. Um. My answer is Persona. So, I mean, I, I don't think that's crazy. I love Persona game on Switch. Persona games should be portable. I don't care how mad that upsets PlayStation fans. They should be portable. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'll say. All right, last question. Would you rather have a 30-minute, 30 30-plus 30 minute direct every two to three months or smaller five to seven minute directs every other week? And that comes in from Mathman Craig. So I definitely want the, the 30 plus minutes um, every two to three months. That's definitely what I'd prefer. Um, it just, there's a lot of things that they can deliver over a three month time. And I think that trickling information to us is the same as them just like showing us a commercial here and there. And it's not as impactful. It doesn't build the hype, um, but they have a lot of stuff to show. And I think that, that that's a great model for what they've been doing anyway. I would agree with you. I think uh, if they went every five to seven weeks or every other week or every four weeks that's that's it's too often it loses its its specialness the fun part about the direct is out of the out of the blue nowhere they go direct tomorrow five o'clock and that's it and then the internet starts racing crazy with predictions and like that's the fun part the fun part is we all experience this together if they keep doing it every other week they're smaller there's not nearly as many things to talk about they start to become scheduled starts to become routine it's like inside Xbox, it's like the other things, you know, it's like PlayStation blog, like nobody blogs anymore. Like this just becomes videos on YouTube at that point. That's not the fun part. The fun part is when they save it all up and then uh, we see Iwata holding some bananas and they hit you with 19 indie games in like four and a half seconds. And you're like, what the hell just happened? That's the fun <laughs> part. The fun part is the way that they Nintendoize it. And uh, I definitely want them to keep it that way. So I would definitely say that. And it looks like we have uh, one more in here. Kara asks, why would you sell your Hylian Shield 2DS, Donnie? What the? Also, hi. Sorry, I can't be there. I, of course, miss Pokemon Day. We miss you, Caro. Miss everybody. Everybody's leaving me over here, Ryan. Shaq, man, it's getting, it's getting lonely. <laughs> <laughs> lonely Shaq days. Uh, anyway, that'll uh, do it for Nintendo Shack this week. I'd like to thank, once again, our guest, Ryan, from Nintendo Nostalgia coming over to the shack please tell all of our listeners where they can find you and uh, more of your amazing nintendo thoughts sure thing man uh, you can find me on twitter at metroid hunter 
Um, and you can find my show, Nintendo Nostalgia, um, over at the Nintendo Village. Uh, Nintendo Nostalgia over there. And uh, Oh, of course- uh, Gary. Oh, come on, man. Oh, <laughs> gross. But if you don't want to mess with it, that, uh, I guess you can go to the Apple Podcast and Google Play and listen to us. Um, join in on our Facebook. Um, of course, Nintendo N- underscore NOS is our Twitter handle. So come check us out. We're great guys. We've got a great uh, nostalgia chat going on. And uh, we have some contests running right now on, uh, you know, pick pick between these two SNES games and which one gets eliminated. Move on to the tournament, the final tournament to see which NES game comes out on top. Uh, we just did... Uh, Sorry, SNES games. We just did NES games, and uh, Zelda won out over uh, Mario Brothers three. But uh, now we have the Super Nintendo going. So we got a we got a fan uh, that's on there posting that that contest. It's quite a lot of fun. I, I will say I do love your guys' like book club nature. You guys all kind of rally around a game, and you play it together, and you talk about it, and you experience it together. It's a lot of fun. So, uh, we kind of ride those waves every now and again. You know, we, we get into, like, Mario Golf as a team, like, all together, and it really makes for a better experience that way, and I, I really like that. And uh, It's a cool, cool group of people, I, mean, I love all of you guys, except for except for, for Gary. So, you know, not him, but everybody else is good. That's a, that's a, <laughs> I love you, man. <laughs> I hope I hope he hears that. I hope he hears that, so he could like, what the hell? <laughs> um, hey man, anyway. us colors gotta stick together. I'm Ryan Black. He's Gary Gray. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, he's 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 you. You guys are all great. He knows that. Um, so anyway, with that said, that's it for us this week on Nintendo Shack. My name's Donnie Reese. You find me at Play Nintendo again. Patron giveaway, patron lottery is tomorrow, so by the time you're hearing this, it's already happened. But it's not too late for you to get on next month, and we'll be announcing those prizes soon. So head over there at, PS- at patreon.com slash PSVG. Good night, Kooplings. Later. Whenever you're ready. All right. This is Frederick from Fire Emblem Awakening, and I forgot the line already. What?